knock anybody on that, but you got to understand. I, I, I'm not sure I would call it excellence, but that's where you and I have a strong difference of opinion. In his, right, in his perception, he's considering it excellence, and a lot of people appreciate that, of course. What, what, I, what I'm saying is that he's not there to make a, make a buck and just say, yep, this is it. Buy it, you know, uh, like a, a fly-by-night company. Here's my product. I'm selling 10 million of them. I'm making a shitload of money. You know, I'm going to make another product. I, what I'm saying is that he cares about what he's very involved in what in what Apple delivers. And um, yeah, I, 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 I'll try and let that stab at the Nexus One mobile. <laughs> <It's like laughs> <laughs> Although that really is appropriate. That's <laughs> just. <laughs> To be honest, that's probably one of the reasons I as like I, I when I left Mac way 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 back in the day, I, I left them because they didn't fit me. But back then, you know, Microsoft was the one doing this. We are better. We are superior advertising. Apple wasn't really doing that. They they had like I think two ads that do that, but it wasn't it wasn't their marketing campaign. You know, they were basically pointing our manuals this thick, their manuals eight books. But aside from that, they weren't really doing anything. They weren't pretending to be perfect. They... Yeah, I remember that commercial. <laughs> yeah, but they weren't pretending to be perfect. They weren't doing that crap. Uh, and, and honestly, what, what what started getting me real imbibed of just having an outright hatred for Apple as a company is that perfection thing. Because honestly, because it doesn't suit me. I, I, I'm I'm of the other mindset. I've just always felt like using an Apple product and sitting down in front of it is a forced compromise. I'm settling for less because it doesn't suit me. And and because of that perceived perception. If they didn't try and tell me it was perfect, why it wouldn't suit me, I you know, I would I wouldn't feel that way because I'm like, okay, this this isn't I don't like this flavor of ice cream. Maybe you like it. I don't. It's like that would that would be that would be what it is. But because of all the other crap on top of it, it's it's not just they're not just saying this is the perfect flavor of ice cream, but they're saying you, you, there's something wrong with you if you don't like it. And I'm like, well, I guess there's something wrong with me then because I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, the, it, the, the thing of it is, um, you know, I was a, a very uh, the first computers I used were all Apple, you know, like. Uh, the Apple II and all that stuff, and then I got into the Macs, and then I, I had I owned a couple Mac clones, mm-hmm. um, and, I, and I left Apple really and did not touch an Apple computer until because uh, this was in '94 when Windows NT began. See, I was so impressed with Microsoft, I could give a crap about '95 and '98. The real I was so infatuated with Windows NT that I mean, I was like, this, this future and I know Apple had nothing on it I mean it, it was total vision that again Microsoft completely just screwed up later and, uh, in all fairness they did get some of that back with XP but yeah, I, I know what you're talking about with NT in 2000 yeah <laughs> but um, you know because my favorite my favorite system that was so solid was NT4 I was I mean I still have Play, you know, clients that are running, if you can believe it, Windows NT4, damn thing but not crash. No problems, nothing. Solid as a rock. I mean, I loved that, that, that NT version. Now, I, and, and now you got to understand from my perception, I was giving up Apple in the Apple world to try something new. And... Um, it, 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 interestingly enough, Windows doesn't always make you make that choice. Right. right that's right. that's my, my other problem with the iWorld. But yeah, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, because I was a you know, also doing a lot of stuff with uh, AIX, you know, IBM, and uh, a lot of Lotus, a lot of Lotus software in the 90s. But um, man, Windows NT 
just started irritating me after Windows NT4. I refused to upgrade any further for a long time. Uh, I hated the merger of NT and the retail side, uh, culminating, you know, to win, uh, Y2K or W2K. And, yeah. Um, uh, and then, yeah, XP. I, I still didn't know with XP. I hated XP. XP, all of the clients at NXP were experiencing millions and millions of problems. I mean, just like, Uh, On that, I know exactly what you're talking about. Here was the thing with XP, and I made this comment to people when XP came out. I'm like, XP isn't as bad an OS as you think. Here's what you do. A, you didn't ever try it. There were these, like, official fixes for XP. I said, don't do that. Do this stuff in the unsupported mode and treat it like it's NT. And if you did that, XP did not have all these problems. But that was not the official recommendation for Microsoft. The official recommendation for Microsoft was go fuck your system up. Because for that, because for that first 18 months there, the stuff wasn't there. But if you did it in compatibility mode using all the NT stuff because it was built on that core, it worked! <laughs> Man, you know, I, Windows literally drove me away personally. I mean, on my personal use, I hate it. I hate it. I hated looking at the thing. I didn't want to deal with it. I, it became the mainstay of my workplace, the mainstay of most of my clients and programming. But when I came home, I did not want to look at the damn operating system. And um, so when um, OS X first came out, uh, was it uh, Cheetah and, and then uh, Puma? There were still complications with OS X when it first came out. And then there was still a lot of classic emulation uh, hey, I, I think it really took till about Tiger for OS X to finish the transition off of the next step into modern yeah, OS X. Yeah, Tiger was, is, it's still really I, uh, my favorite OS X flavor. Although Snow Leopard, see Snow Leopard got tarnished when I tried to upgrade a few Macs that just didn't work out. And that was the, you know, I was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know this is blasphemy in the Apple world, but the way I look at Snow Leopard is I see Snow Leopard as a Vista, uh, in that uh, whatever 10.7 is going to be, I have a feeling, just like with Windows 7, Apple's going to do what Microsoft did, and they're going to go back and fix these bugs. And my guess is there's a 10.7 coming out next year. Yeah, but hey, what's wrong with Snow Leopard being $29? Uh, and, and it did a lot underneath the hood, and I and I made a video defending both Windows 7 and Snow Leopard, and that people need to stop wanting radical change in software. That causes havoc. Oh it no, makes, no, it's, it's like it's my, my my only problem was I I think for people, especially on Windows 7, for people who had suffered the ills of Vista, Windows 7 should have been a free upgrade. It's. Uh, it should have been a free. It like it should have been treated like a service pack and been a free upgrade for them. And uh, in some cases, because of the issues that went with Snow Leopard, uh, if there wasn't issues with Snow Leopard, yeah. But because of the issues, like where you would you would break quick time or you wouldn't have a smooth upgrade or other things would do like that. I really think Snow Leopard should have been a free upgrade for Leopard users. It should have been a paid upgrade for anyone pre-Leopard. Uh, Tiger people side and yada yada. But for Leopard users, even though, like you're saying, all that other stuff happened because of the potential issues, if it had just been an upgrade, but a free upgrade for them, nobody would have really cared. I mean, a lot of people didn't have issues, but I mean, I did. And, I mean, I was getting... Windows flashbacks, because that's the shit you put up with, with Windows, you know, oh, it didn't install, you know, oh, great, there's an NT loader file corruption, you know, oh, my God, I was looking at it, I was like, Jesus, this is not supposed to happen, I was, I got infuriated, because my expectations for OS 10 are a lot higher, um, and, man, I was just upset, so, I, I was able, though, it recouped, I was able to install Celebrate flawlessly on a couple other machines, um, that okay, fine. I don't. I'm trying to see what was may, maybe the issue in hand on why it screwed up my parents' iMac um, and a couple of the Macs that I have. But uh, it's running on my Mac Mini, and it runs great. The, the number one complaint I have been hearing from people uh, with the the Snow Leopard thing has been they had some application installed on Leopard that was built on top of QuickTime 7 
And part of Snow Leopard is putting Quick Time Ten in, and it goes and looks for Quick Time Ten first. And and, yeah. and and they have endless issues with these applications because QuickTime 10 can't run them for what we were talking about before, and it doesn't realize it has QuickTime 7 also. You have to, like, go find the file, manually edit it, do, do other things like this. It, it's, it's a simple issue if you understand why it's causing it, but from the average Mac user, this is an unacceptable catastrophe because it doesn't work anymore! <laughs> But I mean, yeah, you know, so well, you know, Windows 7 is recuperated, but my expectations are always really kind of just low for, for Windows. I mean, I, I lived the roller coaster too long, I guess you could say, and have experienced too much that I, in order for Microsoft to, I, I guess, regain status, you know, I have to stay on the roller coaster a little bit longer and see how the ride is. But uh, I, will give them, I, I will give them credit where credit is due, and that's why... I, I defend Windows 7 and For what it is, Windows 7 is great, but I'm just like you. I, I, I have to deal with that roller coaster all the time at work. I didn't want to deal with it at home. I got off at home. I, I got on Linux, I'm happier for it. <laughs> like, I didn't want to ride the roller coaster anymore. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, you deal, I, I, it's like you've got a massive roller coaster that's going to I guess so let's assess that. I don't know if any of this will be relevant in a few weeks or something, but yeah, like you said, we're on an hour and we can't get into the... Uh, so that, uh, unless you think we can wrap up Tango in like five minutes. <laughs> okay, what, what, I don't know, what is... Did you say Tango? Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a video app that is both Android and uh, iOS that lets you do basically like FaceTime calls, but you can do them cross-platform. You can do from Android to iOS, from any, even to iPhone 3s. It's like, it, it's not. Um, I think apps like that are more the solution for things like that, but uh, it's, I don't know. It's, I don't know what Apple's going to think about it because it's duplicating FaceTime functionality, but it's, it's, it's in iOS and it's approved, so they didn't block it. But... Block it. I'm glad that it. That's. Yeah, it looks fine. I mean, I, I'm looking at the website. Tango Vita. Mm -hmm. Mobile video call wherever you are. So it runs on Wi-Fi. Yes. I believe. I I believe so. Uh, on Android, uh, they didn't do a good job in make in, on Android. It has access to every single thing, including some things it shouldn't. And I think that's just because they didn't toggle the stuff back. But it has me a little concerned because if this company gets bought, it they need to fix that. So it's only accessing. Yeah, you know, see what's happening. Yeah. Okay. But I'll, it, I'll, I'll try to do a test. I'll have my wife load it on her iPhone. Yeah, you can load it on your EV or whatever. It's like it's like from what I've seen, it looks like it works great. Um, it's like and and that's really what we need. It's like it shouldn't matter what platform you on. You should be able to talk to each other until it gets to that point. It, we don't have video calls. <laughs> it's like it should be. It needs to be platform agnostic. What, what, what surprises me is that this had to do this because Skype is in the perfect position to do this if they'd stop dicking around with it. Because I, I don't think this can call desktop computers, which Skype could. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Right. I guess we'll end there because we're right on the time block. You got it. All right, ciao.